How's it going, guys? It's Avi from Weather Sponge 5000. Today is September 8th, 2019, on a Sunday night, as what's left of Dorian has completely altered its characteristics from a tropical storm to an extra tropical cyclone. So it's no longer a tropical warm core storm, as it's considered an extra tropical cyclone. And it's currently at 160 miles per hour and it's quickly weakening and it's expected to continue weakening as the storm moves up more north and east of the eastern the coastal Canada regions as it gets closer to the proximity of Greenland but it's expected to die out before then before it's just south of Greenland due to the lack of instability up that far up north there's not a lot of warm air to continue to fuel this storm to continue to create that convection within the core so this is expected to fizzle out europe shouldn't be worried as it's good news that Fa dorian is finally done with what with a long journey it had over the caribbean islands just offshore Flo florida over the bahamas and throughout the southeast coast and even up to canada which got impacted hard by a category 2 strength type hurricane with winds of 100 miles per hour with a large wind field as well thankfully though the storm is moving quite fast so the impacts didn't really last that long for Canada but since the wind field was so large it lasted more than you would think for a tropical cyclone moving at 30 miles per hour to the northeast but now Dorian seems to be gone we have Gabriel which doesn't seem to have much which does it which won't seem like it's going to impact land at all during its life cycle as it's expected to as it's turning north at 60 miles per hour but then it's expected to speed up and then fizzle out just like dorian as it moves up to the northeast due to the lack of instability this storm will have so europe shouldn't be worried about that gabriel should die down pretty quickly as here's the current track it's expected to remain a tropical storm but it but its characteristics will soon alter into extra tropical as it moves more towards the north and east and pretty much fizzle out by the wednesday time frame but other than gabriel other than wilma i mean not wilma um, dorian we have this tropical disturbance number one which currently has uh still a low 20 percent chance of developing over the next um two days but over the next five days the chance increases up to 40%, which is considered a medium chance by the National Hurricane Center. I expect this chance to go up today because yesterday it was at 40 for the next five days. Because I expect it to go up because it, it might have entered a more conducive environment during its later life cycle. But the, her, but the computer models still aren't sensing a 100% more conducive area um beyond five days from now or around five days from now so the chance is still remaining at 40 percent development for a tropical cyclone but i wouldn't be surprised if this continues its check on west the chances may increase as the computer models gain more confidence that there might be a more conducive environment for this tropical disturbance invest 94 l to develop but we have to see because weather is still unpredictable beyond five days it could there could easily easily be a non-conducive environment in this area but but when computer models are leaning towards a later development cycle where the chances increase later there is a better chance that there might be a more conducive environment beyond five days from now we just have to see where this disturbance goes over the next five days and how all these disturbances play out and how all the um current conditions play out ahead of it but if but where will this go it seems like it's gonna head straight on towards the west which might be good news in a way because this area right here just south of hispaniola puerto rico cuba jamaica is considered the tropical cyclone graveyard where a lot of these tropical cyclones that somehow that sometimes go on in this area just south of the caribbean islands have a tendency to fizzle out around this area due to because the air is very very stable around that area we see a lot of sinking air in this area and also the upper level winds also increase shearing those a lot of that warm core 
of the of any type of tropical disturbance or low pressure system that enters here to fizzle out with the wind as the upper level winds affect kind of the warm core of a lot of these tropical cyclones that enter just south of the Caribbean islands. There are some exceptions though, so don't get too excited. Um, don't bring up crazy expectations that it's just going to fizzle out because there are exceptions. We saw obviously Hurricane Matthew was this far south of around three years ago now, but it was still a category five, 165 mile per hour hurricane. We also saw um, Hurricane Wilma, which ended up being one of the strongest tropical cyclones ever in world history. Um, that was just south of the Caribbean islands. And we also, I think we also had Hurricane Ivan, which was pretty strong um, just south of the Caribbean, Caribbean islands as well. So there are some exceptions, but a lot of the time, the tendency around this area is that these tropical cyclones fizzle out. And we're hoping that's the case as it moves its trek on west. However, there's still there still could be a chance that this could easily turn up north eventually, possibly affecting the Caribbean islands, but it's too far to predict as of right now as just make sure to keep and watch ahead of this um, over the next several days. And I would expect the Leeward Islands may get some type of impacts, whether it's a tropical storm, whether it's just a disturbance, at least enhanced rainfall, I can confidently say will be the case for the Leeward Islands around six days from now unless this takes a dramatic very rare track north like that but it isn't really usual that that happens as it's more likely even if this takes a turn up north that this will bring enhanced rainfall to the leeward islands and then um we have this other tropical disturbance very low percent chance of developing zero percent chance over the next um 48 hours and then it, it slightly increases near the Bahamas, which is the least thing the Bahamas needs right, ha right now, especially the Grand Bahama that just got devastated by Hurricane Dorian. But a small chance of development, development over 20%, and I'll show you why currently. So you could see that there's a disturbance right now. You could barely see it's very um, difficult to see. As you could see, the thunderstorms aren't very prominent in this area they aren't very strong as it just looks like a disorganized area of showers currently and there's just enough wind shear where it's shearing it apart there's no real organized warm core low pressure system surrounding these thunderstorms and if this wind shear continue continues on um, all the way up to the Bahamas we may see this storm pretty much do nothing and not developing to a tropical depression or a tropical cycle. And as the GFS model is currently stating, um, is where is where we're currently at right now. You can see that there's still a lot of blues around this area surrounding it. It can't really really focus on one low pressure area due to these upper level winds, these thunderstorms. And over the next several days, it's expected to continue like that as we see an upper level low coming um, just south of Hispaniola coming up north and I expect that to continue to shear these thunderstorms but the GFS is expecting a slightly um a lot of computer models are expecting maybe a more conducive environment here but still a lot of questions remain with how much wind shear there will be especially when we're talking five days three to five days from now so just keep that in mind if you're in Florida but currently as of right now still a low percent chance of developing and how about 90 invest 94 l um, it's currently non-existent we see a little bit of it but the gfs isn't really too keen of developing it and you can see the strong wind shear associated with this potential upper level low that could form may hinder it a little bit but at the same time it may give it an outflow channel for a lot and then it expects it to kind of move up north and then maybe strengthen but i'm talking way too far ahead there's still a lot of uncertainty with this we have to see um we have to see what's ahead with this as the intensity forecast you could see most of them are taking a tropical at least tropical storm well half of them are taking tropical storm strength and um a little bit less than half are taking it that it's not going to develop into anything and i noticed with these tropical storm forecasts um computer model guidance it's showing 
an increase without stopping of intensity. So if this does end up a tropical storm, it could very well become a category one hurricane. We just have to see what's ahead. I wouldn't be surprised if the um, chances of this developing into a tropical storm increases as we continue to, as this storm continues to move on west. Well, we'll just have to see how much wind shear will be there when it reaches the leeward islands but anyways guys um i guess that's it for this video i thank you guys for watching for tuning in sometimes or every day i don't know how much you tune in this may be your first time but i'm thankful for that any type of viewership i'm thankful for and i hope you guys have a good day